Voyager 2 has spent over 40 years journeying into the unknown, faithfully sending back data from beyond the planets. But recently, it has reportedly detected something so unbelievable, so scientifically explosive, that it's caught the attention of top physicists and triggered intense speculation. According to a Nobel Prize winning scientist, the spacecraft may have observed a phenomenon that defies known physical laws. Even more unsettling? Whispers suggest NASA might not be telling us everything. What exactly did Voyager 2 uncover, and why would revealing it be considered dangerous? The bold beginnings of a legendary mission. In the early 1970s, NASA set out to accomplish something never before attempted – send a spacecraft on a multi-planet tour of the outer solar system. This was made possible thanks to a rare planetary alignment, an event that happens only once every 176 years. This celestial lineup of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune allowed engineers to plan a route where a single probe could use gravitational boosts from each planet to slingshot further outward. From this groundbreaking opportunity came two sibling spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Though both were launched within weeks of each other, Voyager 2 followed a more ambitious route that included all four giant planets. Initially designed to last just four years, these machines were built with incredible ingenuity despite tight technological constraints. Voyager 2's onboard computers had a mere 69 kilobytes of memory. It recorded data on eight-track tape systems and used a transmitter with just 23 watts of power, the equivalent of a refrigerator light bulb, to communicate across unimaginable distances. Despite the simplicity of its tech by modern standards, it was crafted to be rugged, resilient, and efficient in the extreme cold and radiation of deep space. Scientists originally doubted the probe would even survive its trip past Jupiter, fearing everything from asteroid impacts to electronics failure. But Voyager 2 exceeded expectations, dodging hazards and sending back stunning insights. What began as a limited mission soon turned into a decades-long voyage that would transform our understanding of the solar system and possibly even the laws of nature. Launching Toward the Outer Planets The real game-changer in Voyager's planning came when JPL scientists recognized that a planetary alignment in the late 1970s could enable gravity-assist flybys through the entire outer solar system. With carefully calculated timing and precision navigation, Voyager 2 would gain momentum from each planetary pass, conserving fuel while achieving unheard-of speeds. Voyager 2 launched first, on August 20, 1977, atop a Titan II IE Centaur rocket from Cape Canaveral. Though Voyager 1 launched shortly after on September 5, it took a different, faster trajectory toward Jupiter. Voyager 2's mission, however, was designed to take it farther, reaching planets no probe had visited before. Before launch, NASA engineers tested every instrument and system on board. From imaging cameras to cosmic ray detectors, every component had to be compact, reliable, and able to function without human intervention for years. Mission Control could only send delayed commands over radio, so Voyager 2 had to be partially autonomous. As the craft moved beyond Mars, the Deep Space Network kicked in. NASA's global network of radio dishes built to capture weak signals from deep space. A single miscalculation early in the mission could have ruined its entire trajectory. But Voyager 2 stayed on course, setting the stage for historic planetary encounters. Jupiter, a world of surprises. Voyager 2 reached Jupiter in July 1979, following in Voyager 1's path but providing new angles and extended observations. Jupiter's intense magnetic field and swirling atmosphere posed challenges, but the scientific payoff was immense. Voyager 2 transmitted breathtaking images of the planet's bands, storms, and the gigantic Great Red Spot, offering a new view of this massive gas giant. But it was Jupiter's moons that truly stole the spotlight. Io was revealed to be volcanically active, erupting sulfur-rich plumes 
the first such discovery outside Earth. Europa's cracked icy surface hinted at a possible subsurface ocean. Ganymede and Callisto, with their contrasting terrain and cratered surfaces, expanded our understanding of how moons form and evolve. Even Jupiter's rings, previously unseen in detail, came into focus. These faint bands of dust and debris shocked astronomers, who had assumed only Saturn had such features. The mission also captured crucial data on Jupiter's magnetosphere, which acts like a miniature solar system in itself, controlling particle flows and magnetic interactions across vast distances. Thanks to careful planning, Voyager 2 harnessed Jupiter's gravity and slingshotted toward its next destination, Saturn. The mission had already exceeded expectations, but the surprises had only just begun. Saturn, rings, moons, and mysteries. In August 1981, Voyager 2 made its dramatic approach to Saturn. While Voyager 1 had already given humanity its first close look at the ringed planet, Voyager 2 provided fresh data and new vantage points. Its high-resolution images revealed that Saturn's iconic rings were actually composed of countless thin strands, with gaps and waves shaped by tiny moons in orbit. Among Saturn's moons, Titan stood out. Though Voyager 2 passed it at a greater distance than its twin had, it still gathered valuable information on its thick, nitrogen-rich atmosphere. Other moons like Rhea, Dion, and Tethys showed evidence of past tectonic activity. Enceladus, with its unusually bright surface, raised questions about potential subsurface processes, questions that would take decades to explore further. Voyager 2 also observed massive storms in Saturn's atmosphere, along with temperature and pressure data from deep within the gas giant. Unlike Jupiter, Saturn's magnetic field aligned more closely with its rotational axis, leading to some surprising behaviors in how particles flowed and reacted. And once again, Saturn's gravity served as a launch pad, this time propelling Voyager 2 toward the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. With each planetary flyby, the spacecraft continued to rewrite science textbooks. And now, according to some, it may be doing something far stranger. Voyager 2 at Uranus, the tilted giant and its frozen secrets. In January 1986, Voyager 2 became the first, and so far only, spacecraft to visit Uranus, a distant icy world that had remained largely unexplored. With its pale, bluish hue and muted features, Uranus was often overshadowed by its more dramatic planetary siblings. Expectations were modest, but the data Voyager 2 sent back rewrote the textbooks once again. To begin with, Uranus turned out to be no ordinary planet. Its rotation axis is tilted a staggering 98 degrees, causing it to essentially roll through space on its side. Even more bizarre, its magnetic field is tilted about 60 degrees from its axis and offset from the planet's center. This unique geometry twisted the planet's magnetic tail into a long, spiraling corkscrew, something scientists had never seen before. Voyager's instruments also studied the planet's hazy cloud tops, revealing a pale blue color caused by methane in the upper atmosphere, absorbing red light. While Uranus lacked the bold bands and storms of Jupiter or Saturn, careful analysis revealed faint striping, subtle cloud layers, and even occasional weather systems. Its sideways spin meant extreme seasonal changes. One pole would face the sun directly for decades before plunging into prolonged darkness. But the biggest surprises came from Uranus's moons. Many scientists had expected them to be cold, cratered, and dull. Instead, Voyager 2 revealed a gallery of diverse, geologically complex worlds. Miranda, in particular, stunned researchers. Despite being one of the smallest major moons, it featured massive cliff faces, grooves, and what looked like mismatched terrain, almost as if it had been broken apart and pieced back together. Other moons, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, and Oberon, also displayed signs of active or ancient geological processes. These findings upended long-held beliefs about the icy moons of the outer planets, 
and hinted that even distant satellites could host internal activity. Voyager 2 also provided a detailed look at Uranus's ring system. Ground-based telescopes had detected ring arcs, but Voyager confirmed the planet had multiple thin, dark rings composed of small, likely carbon-rich particles. These narrow rings are thought to be sculpted and maintained by small shepherd moons through gravitational interaction, a phenomenon later seen around other gas giants. In addition, Voyager's instruments observed how the decreasing solar influence affected the surrounding plasma environment. The tilted magnetic field caused fluctuations in particle flow, providing insight into how magnetic fields interact with the solar wind at extreme angles. Having exceeded expectations once again, Voyager 2 adjusted its course, using Uranus's gravity to push onward to its final planetary target, Neptune. Though sunlight was fading and distance increasing, the spacecraft remained strong, ready to explore one last world and continue transforming our view of the solar system. Neptune flyby, winds, geysers, and the last giant. By August 1989, Voyager 2 had reached Neptune, the eighth and final planet in its grand tour. As the only spacecraft ever to visit Neptune, Voyager's flyby revealed a stormy, deep blue world with extreme weather and unusual moons. Although Neptune is smaller than Jupiter or Saturn, it proved to be one of the most dynamic and puzzling planets of all. One of the most striking discoveries was the Great Dark Spot, a massive storm system in Neptune's atmosphere reminiscent of Jupiter's Great Red Spot. But unlike Jupiter's centuries-old tempest, Neptune's storm vanished within a few years, detected again later in different locations, suggesting rapid atmospheric changes. Winds on Neptune shocked researchers. Despite receiving little sunlight, the planet exhibited the fastest winds in the solar system, reaching speeds over 1,300 miles per hour. High-altitude clouds made of methane ice crystals raced around the globe, forming delicate bands and streaks across its atmosphere. These unexpected conditions raised questions about internal heat sources and the physics of weather in the outer solar system. Perhaps the most fascinating discovery was Neptune's moon Triton. Voyager captured haunting images of a pinkish icy surface shaped by active geology. Triton had smooth plains, bizarre cantaloupe terrain, and nitrogen geysers erupting from below the crust, suggesting the presence of internal heat and a dynamic subsurface environment. Triton orbits Neptune in the opposite direction of the planet's rotation, indicating it may have been captured from the Kuiper belt. This made it a unique case study, a cold, distant object showing surprising vitality, reshaping assumptions about what's possible in the far reaches of our solar system. Voyager 2 also found additional previously unknown moons and captured the first close-up look at Neptune's faint ring system. The rings were incomplete, appearing as arcs rather than full loops, a feature scientists believe may be caused by gravitational forces from nearby moons acting as shepherds. With Neptune's flyby complete, Voyager 2's primary planetary mission officially ended, but its journey was far from over. The spacecraft had now visited all four outer giants, an unmatched feat, and was set to plunge even farther into the unknown, toward the edge of the sun's influence and the realm of interstellar space. The technology that made it possible. Although launched in 1977, Voyager 2 was built using technology from an earlier era. Its onboard memory totaled just 69 kilobytes, Data was stored on an 8-track digital tape recorder before being transmitted to Earth, a method that now seems quaint but proved reliable across billions of miles. Communications relied on a 23-watt transmitter, barely more powerful than a fridge light, focused through a 12-foot high-gain antenna aimed toward Earth. This signal was picked up by NASA's Deep Space Network, a collection of massive dish antennas stationed across the globe. As Voyager moved farther from the Sun, the data rate dropped significantly, but constant upgrades to ground receivers kept the flow of information alive. The craft powered itself using radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, 
which convert heat from decaying plutonium-238 into electricity. Over time, the power output steadily declined, forcing mission planners to shut off non-essential instruments or heaters to keep critical systems running. Despite the extreme cold and limited power, some instruments continued functioning beyond their expected limits, a testament to the engineering foresight behind the mission. Voyager 2 also carried redundant systems. If a tape recorder failed, a backup could take over. If one thruster misfired, another was ready. Its analog architecture was simple but robust, allowing it to weather the rigors of deep space travel far better than more delicate modern designs might have. Crossing the Edge into interstellar space. Beyond Neptune lies a vast, sparsely explored region filled with icy bodies and the fading influence of our sun. Voyager 2 continued onward, passing through the Kuiper Belt and into the outermost layers of the heliosphere, the bubble of particles and magnetic field created by the solar wind. Eventually, the spacecraft reached the termination shock, where the solar wind slows abruptly, and then the heliopause, the point where the solar wind is finally overpowered by the interstellar medium. Voyager 1 reached this boundary first in 2012. Voyager 2 crossed it in November 2018, but along a different trajectory, giving scientists a second sample of this elusive frontier. Data showed a jump in cosmic ray intensity and subtle changes in magnetic fields, confirming the craft had entered interstellar space. Yet the expected shifts in magnetic orientation were more gradual than predicted, raising new questions about how the Sun's bubble interacts with the galaxy beyond. Though it hasn't left the solar system entirely, since the distant Oort cloud still lies ahead, Voyager 2 is now firmly in interstellar territory. Its instruments continue measuring cosmic rays, low-frequency plasma waves, and magnetic fluctuations expanding our understanding of what lies beyond the sun's protective shield. Managing power in the final frontier. With each year, Voyager 2's energy supply dwindles. The RTGs lose about four watts annually, leaving the mission team with difficult choices, which instruments to keep running and which to shut down. Every decision is weighed carefully, as turning off a heater or sensor might mean losing valuable data or an entire system. Despite the harsh conditions, some instruments have continued to work without heat, like the cosmic ray detector, which proved crucial in confirming the probe's entry into interstellar space. This unexpected durability has extended the mission's lifespan far beyond initial predictions. At this stage, the spacecraft operates on borrowed time. Memory is tight. Propellant reserves for attitude control are finite. Eventually, systems will begin to shut down permanently. But until that moment comes, every byte of data Voyager 2 sends home helps paint a clearer picture of the edge of our solar neighborhood. Voyager 2's Enduring Legacy Voyager 2 doesn't just carry scientific instruments, it also carries a message. Like its twin, it holds a golden record, a time capsule of Earth's cultures, sounds, and greetings intended for any intelligent life that might one day encounter it. This symbolic gesture, endorsed by then-President Jimmy Carter, expresses a hope that humanity might one day become part of a broader cosmic community. It's a poignant reminder that this spacecraft isn't just a machine, it's an emissary of Earth. From the geysers of Triton to the twisted magnetosphere of Uranus, Voyager 2 has shown us that even the coldest most distant worlds can surprise us. Its discoveries have inspired new missions, reshaped planetary science, and challenged our assumptions about where activity and complexity can exist in the cosmos. Even now, as it sails beyond the sun's reach, its faint signals continue to whisper stories from the void, proving that exploration, curiosity, and perseverance can take us farther than we ever imagined.